So welcome everybody and thank you for connecting today to this uh, webinar which has been jointly organized by ETHEX, uh, the Economic and Commercial Offices of Spain in India and the, in the Spanish Chamber of Commerce. First, just the brief instructions. Uh, I am going to ask you please uh, to mute your microphones when you're not speaking. And I would also like to say that there will be a period of 15 minutes to ask uh, questions. So please uh, wait until that uh, moment to ask your questions. So um, the agenda, the purpose of this uh, webinar is to present uh, Indian companies with investment opportunities in Spain. For that purpose, we're going to have a brief introduction by the Economic and Commercial Offices, followed by a presentation from Invest in Spain. Afterwards, the Indo Spanish Chamber of Commerce will explain us how they can support the companies who wish to do business in Spain. And uh, we will also have the, the pleasure to have uh, three companies uh, who have invested in Spain and who will share their experience with us. Finally, Coinman Consultants uh, we will also make a presentation on uh, making overseas investments and share their experiences in assisting companies for that purpose. So uh, to begin, let me introduce you to Vanessa Alvarez. Uh, she's the Economic and Commercial Counselor in the office in Mumbai. And uh, myself, Lucia Paternina, I'm the Chief Economic and Commercial Counselor in the office in New Delhi. And we're going to make a short introduction about the trade and investment relationships between India and Spain. Before COVID-19, India and Spain had significantly increased their bilateral relations. At the political level, we can highlight the visit uh, by Prime Minister Modi to Spain in 2017 with inauguration of uh, the India-Spain -Spa Business Forum and uh, also the visit by the two uh, foreign uh, uh, affairs ministers to each country in 2019. COVID has, of course, uh, reduced the number of institutional visits and activities, but uh, nevertheless, we have continued working on strengthening the collaboration between the two countries. The best example is the Spain-India Business Forum held virtually last April with the participation of uh, the Spanish Minister of Commerce, Ms. Reyes Maroto, and also the Indian Minister of Commerce, Mr. Piyus Goyal. Later this year, we were also expecting high-level visits uh, from Spain to India to keep the momentum and deepen the cooperation between the two countries. Trade and investment are no doubt a key aspect of the relationship. In this way, if a political level uh, relations were strengthening, trade and investment followed suit. Commercial flows reached uh, 5 billion euros in 2019, and uh, the exports from India to Spain amounted to 4 billion euros, and with a healthy growing rate, which reflects uh, the dynamic growth and the purchase power of the Spanish market. The situation caused by COVID-19, of course, uh, interrupted this growing trend, but after COVID, both the Indian and the Spanish economies are expected to recover strongly. We have already seen part of this recovery in 2021, and the provisional figures of trade uh, already reflect this improvement in comparison with 2020. However, even if in the area of trade we see that there is still much uh, untapped potential, this is even more evident in the area of investment relations. Investment trends saw a considerable margin of improvement, especially regarding Indian investment in Spain. Spain is the 14th largest economy in the world, and we are the 15th largest, biggest investor in India. So our economic power and our investment in India are aligned. Regarding investment in Spain, uh, the main investors are logically main economies in the world, like the US, uh, China, Japan, or Germany. However, India, as the sixth economy in the world, is lagging behind being just the 50th biggest investor in Spain. Therefore, there is a huge investment potential in Spain that Indian companies should tap. There are many reasons why Indian companies could benefit from investing in Spain. Javier Iraola will later elaborate on this aspect, uh, but uh, allow me to mention just a few of the most important. First, Spain occupies a, a prominent position worldwide as the 14th uh, world's economies. And uh, we can also highlight the macroeconomic stability, the dynamic and sustainable growth pattern of Spain, uh, before COVID-19, uh, it was growing above the average of the European Union. Spain also offers one of Europe's most attractive domestic markets, with over 46 million of consumers, plus uh, the 82 million of tourists that visit Spain annually. 
Additionally, Spain grants access to the world's uh, largest market, which is the European Union. And it is also an optimal strategic location for privileged access to the entire Mediterranean, uh, North of Africa, Middle East, and of course, uh, Latin America, a region with which Spain has solid economic, business, institutional, and cultural ties. Finally, Spain offers an excellent business climate with top infrastructure, highly qualified workforce with competitive cost, tax regimes that favor companies and foreign investors, and the best quality of life according to the service conducted by HSBC. On the other hand, uh, Spanish companies have uh, been interested in India for many years. As, as, as I said before, uh, Spain is the 15th largest investor in India in the recent decades. And uh, I am going to leave you with my colleague, Vanessa, who is going to tell you more about the Spanish business presence in India. Please, Vanessa. Thank you, Lucia. Uh, I will just comment five uh, very brief ideas about uh, the investments of Spain in India so far and those of India in Spain and about our common future ahead. Uh, first, let me uh, just um, uh, speak about the uh, moment when the Indian econ economy was formally opened in the 90s and uh, 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 foreign direct investment flows started to come uh, uh, in great numbers. The, the, the investment towards India has increased uh, significantly over the past years and reached a peak in the, in the fiscal year 2019-2020. And, 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 the, and the capacity of India to, to, to become a, a, a talented, a desti a talented a country, attractive for investors worldwide, has just simply exploded. And accordingly, companies have been coming in the, in the past years from all over the world. At the same time, India has also uh, evolved and is becoming an important investor abroad. There is a lot to do, of course, but uh, we see that there is a pattern, there is a, a trend over there, and the recent rules by the, the Reserve Bank of India easening uh, uh, in some aspects the investments abroad are very welcome. Really. The second idea is that uh, uh, Spanish companies have been investing in India for decades now, and uh, that we have learned a lot from this experience. Uh, the first companies came in the 90s and they were mostly industrial uh, companies. Then uh, large, very big Spanish companies came to India and participated in projects uh, in areas like energy, water infrastructure, because they combined an industrial, industrial capacity and knowledge with uh, advanced services. And also uh, con uh, companies, Spanish companies that work with consumer goods have been coming progressively more and more to India and are now also present in this market. So nowadays, what we have here is a pattern of a diversified investment. We have more than 200 Spanish companies that are present in India uh, and that are supporting this market and really, really uh, growing together with India. And uh, and uh, we want uh, we do whatever it takes to uh, keep supporting them and and, and encouraging uh, more companies to come to India. At the same time, uh, uh, Indian investments uh, in Spain are very focused in a set of sectors. For instance, we have Indian investments in uh, some sectors like uh, retail, distribution, IT, steel textile industries, um, uh, uh, there are some, there, it is a, a variety of sectors really, but not as broad, as comprehensive as uh, the pattern for Spanish companies. Spanish companies here do renewable energies, construction infrastructures, transport, auto parts, machinery of all kinds, consumer goods, services. So we see some room for new Indian companies to come to Spain and especially to widen the pattern, to bring new sectors to Spain and to uh, really be present in Spain too. Uh, the third idea is the geographical distribution. Spanish companies, as I said, have been coming to India for decades and now they are present a bit across India. The bulk of them are located in Mumbai, but we have, uh, sorry, in New Delhi, of course, but then we have a, a significant number of companies in Mumbai, in Pune, in Bangalore, in Chennai too. So we again have a diversified presence geographically wise, I mean, in, across India. And this has allowed us to create some links with the state governments and with different industrial clusters. 
Uh, regarding India, when we see the pattern of India invest, investing abroad, we see that uh, also the, there has been uh, a change over time. First, Indian companies went more uh, to uh, resource-rich countries, trying to uh, uh, secure some, some supplies. And now we see that there is an interest for countries that offer in, in, uh, incentives in terms of taxes. And of course, the, the traditional, well-known English-speaking countries ha have always been there as an important destination for Indian investment. In this regard, just let me say that in Spain, there is room for uh, 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 India. We think there is room for India to consider new markets. Why not the Spain? Um, according Also, according to the new role that corresponds to India in the world economy as one of the main world economies nowadays, as, uh, as Lucia has said. The fourth idea is uh, regards the ways of collaboration. The Spanish companies first came to India mostly through joint ventures. It was due to the regulation at the time, especially, but nowadays we see all the range. We see subsidiaries, liaison and project offices, mergers and acquisitions. We see a full divers the, uh, diversification again in terms of the ways of collaboration. Uh, we know that Indian companies normally prefer merge, merge, um, mergers and acquisitions, which is fine because in Spain we are open to all forms of collaboration. And my last idea, very briefly, is uh, uh, um, just a step beyond uh, our activities to attract investment, the ones we do in, in Spain, the ones India does also. I think we should think a bit wider and uh, just focusing on growing, in, in keeping growing abroad. Once the domestic market is um, supplied and is uh, well known and we know our market and we have we manage ourselves very comfortably in it, it is simply natural to go abroad and to try to keep growing. In this regard, the, since the economic and commercial offices of India uh, were open in first in New Delhi and then in Mumbai, uh, we have been here all this time to support uh, Spanish companies trying to come to India, but also trying to attract Indian companies to Spain. And in this regard, uh, we, su supply, we can offer all kinds of support to Indian companies interested in Spain. So the economic and commercial office uh, is really a window in, uh, in, in Delhi, in Mumbai, uh, that is here to help Indian companies interested in Spain. We will be there for you in case there is any issue happening or, uh, or um, any, uh, any contact that you may need to, to for whatever reason, for aftercare service, we will always uh, be there accompanying you. So just let me finish saying that um, uh, as you know, uh, as Pat uh, Lucia has already commented, uh, we have an improving industrial capacity. We have a common knowledge of this market because we have been working together for decades here in India. We are an economy that is open to the world. We can compete and actually produce current account surpl surpluses. Uh, and we are a, a platform to a broader market, not only in the EU, but also in Latin America. So um, I think it's very interesting for India to start considering markets uh, apart from the traditional ones and in this particular case really Spain has been there has been here for India and has been learning from India for a long time our cultures are actually very similar and we think it is just natural to go a step beyond and try to grow in Spain also uh, thank you very much that's it Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vanessa. Now we have the pleasure to have with us Mr. Javier Iraola. He is the project director of Investing in Spain and the best person to tell us the benefits and the advantages that Spain represents for the Indian companies who wish to locate their investments in Spain. Please, uh, Javier, the floor is yours. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much, uh, Lucia and Vanessa. I'm going to try to, to share a presentation that, that I think it will help me. Uh, just a second. Let's see if I can do it.
I think it doesn't work for the moment. Sorry about that, but I normally I can't do it. Kaveh, are you facing challenge in uh, sharing the screen? Is it? Yes, yes, I, I'm trying to do that. Uh, Lucia, can you check? Are you able to share the screen? Yes, I'm going to try. Uh, Javier, I have your presentation. Okay, do, do you have I'm my presentation? Yes. Because I, I don't know what is happening, but let me check if I can do it. Doesn't allow me to to do it. Okay. Yeah. Do you see it? Okay. Perfect. So thank you so much, Lucia. Okay. Perfect. I'm gonna try to. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, I like to talk about uh, as. As my colleagues, well, first of all, I want to start again. I'd like to thank, especially the Indo-Spanish Chamber of Commerce and, and the Economic and Commercial Offices of Spain in India, uh, and especially to my colleague, colleagues, Lucia and Vanessa, for inviting me. And I'd like to talk about uh, Spain as a global platform for business and, and international in invest, and uh, giving you some ideas uh, to complete a little bit what um, my colleagues uh, have just said. Uh, so uh, please, next, next uh, slide, Lucia. Um, well, I'm going to give you some key figures and fundamentals to, uh, to complete the, the information that um, Lucia from Delhi and Vanessa from Mumbai have already given to you. Well, uh, as, as they say, uh, we are the uh, uh, world's 14th uh, largest economy and the fourth in the e European Union, and our total population is 47 million, uh, which for India is not that much, but for the average of Europe is, is quite a big uh, country. And world, uh, world's second most visited country, as they mentioned before, and that's mean that uh, before uh, the pandemic, we received more than 83 million international tourists in 2019. And uh, we have uh, several uh, big Spanish companies, 21 in the Forbes Global 2000 uh, largest company. And uh, they are uh, leading positions, especially in infrastructure, energy and waste and water treatment. Um, we have a, a, the second a larger degree of economic openness in Europe, which is significant taking, taking into consideration that, uh, as you know, that European countries are uh, really open in general. And uh, we are the second most uh, prominent investor in Latin America with Mexico and Brazil, as you see there, as third and fourth largest overall recipients. Uh, please. Um, if we have a look at the foreign direct investment in Spain, uh, we are, as you see, the world's 11th largest recipient of FDI and the 15th investor, um, according to the UNTACT uh, report. And as you see uh, on the left side of this slide, uh, the US uh, is, the, is the number one of our investors, uh, followed by several European countries, which is normal. Uh, in, in our region. And as you see, the second one is the United Kingdom, the third France, and the fourth is Germany. And we have a very diversified portfolio uh, with real estate and infrastructure as leading sectors that you see on the, on the right side. And, and in terms of a, a greenfield projects, but we are working in, in here in Invest in Spain, where the fourth largest greenfield destination in Europe by projects, uh, fifth by CapEx, and second by job created, in, according to FDA markets. And as you see on the right side of, of the slide, uh, last year we, we ranked third in, in, in this greenfield projects, ranking just after the United States and the United Kingdom, which is a very interesting result uh, for us. And if we focus on only in, on startup or innovative and high-end uh, investment, we are also in a very good position internationally, as, as we see. So we are uh, really proud about it. 
And the second, the, the next one, please. And uh, the second topic I wanted to address today is the business climate in Spain. So and it is important to point out that Spain has uh, a tax treaties with 96 uh, countries and territories and 17 in Latin America. And as uh, Lucia mentioned before, uh, all those agreements uh, with tax treaties and agreements to protect investment uh, with Mediterranean uh, countries, North Africa, and e even Middle East, uh, give us a, a very strategic position for doing business from Spain, not only in the European Union, inside our internal market, but also in all the Mediterranean area, north of Africa. And as you know, in particular as well with uh, South America, because as you know, we share uh, not only the language, but also a lot of uh, historical roots and a lot of economic interest. On the other hand, Spain is ninth most open uh, country to foreign investment, according to OECD. And we also have more competitive labor costs than other uh, countries um, uh, in Europe. And it's important to take into consideration as well other, uh, our moderate tax uh, revenues and uh, in terms of, of GDP. And we have uh, also, uh, as an example, uh, more than 70 technology parks with, uh, that covers many different industry. And, and, and it is also, I think, interesting to mention that we are the first uh, in Europe in fiber optic network and the second worldwide, first in Europe in high speed network, which is always interesting for many of the tech uh, companies uh, from India. And finally, I think it's interesting to bear in mind the fact that according to the Expat Explorer survey, Spain ranks first in quality of life and second in work-life uh, balance. Uh, that's why we always uh, said in our meetings that Spain is an amazing and interesting country, uh, not only to work, but also to live in. And um, I would like also to comment uh, the barometer of the business climate in Spain from the uh, foreign investors perspective that we conduct every year at Invest in Spain. Uh, with over more than 800 international companies uh, uh, that have invested in Spain and participating in the survey, as you see in this slide, um, the overall assessment is quite positive. And in particular, if you see an infrastructure in uh, human capital, market sites, or quality of life, which is always positive. And the third, the, the third issue I wanted to talk about is the, the business and investment opportunities in general. And starting uh, in, this, in this case with the recovery, transformation, and resilience plans financed by the European Union. It's a very ambitious plan to support our economy after the COVID pandemic. And Spain, which is very interesting, is going to receive uh, 70 billion euros from this European Union plan. And with an investment allocation in 10 lever policies. And as, as you can see here, uh, I would like to highlight perhaps the, the first one, urban and rural agenda, territorial cohesion and modernization of agriculture with 14 billions or the modern, modernization uh, of the industry and the small and medium sized companies with more than 16 billion euros. And the next one, please, the, the next one, another one, please. And to discuss business opportunities from a sector point of view, I have selected four of the most significant ones, but we have uh, uh, other, uh, other industries as well. But I would like just today to focus on those four that I consider that maybe uh, could be interesting for many uh, Indian uh, companies. Well, as you see, I, I'm going to focus on renewable energy, automotive and mobility, life sciences, and agri-food. Uh, starting with uh, renewable energy, I would like to point out that Spain is uh, one of the world's leaders in renewable energy when, with very ambitious goals in sustainability. Uh, we have a strong industrial and technological clusters. 
And it is important to mention the state of the art of technology and the research and development centers. And I would like to highlight that we have a very skilled and competitive workforce in this industry uh, that makes it very attractive for any uh, foreign investors. On the other hand, the European Union recovery plan that I have just mentioned confirms that Spain's, it, it confirms Spain's commitment to the transformation of the European Union economy to promote a more sustainable future. And renewable energies, renewable hydrogen and storage a strategic pro project uh, will mobilize resources worth uh, 16 billion euros. And we hope that uh, to the almost uh, 7 billions that we got from the European Union funds, uh, our private sector is going to contribute with uh, 9.5 billions. And uh, we also have from the public sector 500 million to boost uh, R&D and pioneering renewable hydrogen projects. As a consequence of that, I, I have to say that we have uh, received uh, recently a couple of quite interesting investment in, in hydrogen coming from the UK, one of them, and from the US, another one. That's why I consider that will be interesting for India as well. And in a uh, synaptic uh, way, it is possible to answer to the question of why invest in Spain in renewable energy industry. So apart from, from the ideas I have just mentioned, I would like to point out that uh, Spain has itself the task of reducing carbon emissions by 2050, and Spain excels in natural resources, and we have a quite quality electrical system that allows maximum renewable energy production and under safe conditions. That's why we are attracting right now a lot of uh, uh, projects and investors from many different areas from, from the world. And Spain is a leader in the development of renewable energy from both a uh, technological and industrial standpoint. And because uh, also the latest Recade Index from EY, which rank countries on the attractiveness of the renewable energy investment and in deployment opportunities, places Spain at the 10th in a place in the world, which is really important for us. Well, the second sector I wanted to mention today is the automotive and sustainable mobility. And Spain, as, as they, they mentioned before, um, Lucia and Vanessa is the second largest vehicle manufacturer in Europe uh, after Germany and the uh, eighth in the world. This sector accounts for, uh, in our economy, for 11% of industrial turnover, 18% uh, of the Spanish exports, and it creates more than uh, 2 million jobs. And it is important as well to note that connected and electrical vehicle uh, strategic project uh, aims at developing an ecosystem and complete supply chain for the manufacture of electric and connected vehicles. And it will be financed as well by almost 3 billion from public new public investment. And uh, we hope to have an additional almost 12 billion from the private sector that already has invested in this um, sector and industry in Spain. And uh, to the question as before, why invest in the automotive industry in Spain? Well, I, I would like to point out that Spain, as I have just mentioned, is the second largest automobile manufacturer in Europe. And we have an ideal logistic platform for export to international markets. In fact, 86% uh, of the vehicles manufactured in Spain are export, exported to over 10, 100, uh, uh, 10, uh, 10 hundred countries in, 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 in all the world. And we have a complete supply chain, uh, 1,000 automotive suppliers from uh, 70, uh, 720 business groups, warranty in service and supplies from manufacturing plants. And Spanish production plants are among the most efficient and automated in Europe. Uh, recently, we have a lot of robots uh, for uh, every several employees. And, Taking into consideration the electro, the eco electro mobility, Spanish manufacturers produce right now vehicles in all available propul propulsion technologies and all that you know, gasoline, diesel, pure electric, hybrid plugs in, hybrid 
and gas. And Spanish plants produ produce right now uh, 15 electrified models, but uh, some new electrified models are planned to be produced in the near future. And we are negotiating with some of the main uh, producers and, and investors from different uh, uh, European countries that are, are interested in our market. Uh, on the other hand, the third sector I, I would like to talk about uh, today is life sciences. Uh, well, as you see, the pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry in Spain is one of the most dynamic and competitive worldwide as well. And innovation in healthcare technologies in Spain offers uh, a lot of potential for development. I like to, to highlight here that, that we have more than uh, 1,000 companies in, in this sector, 500 manufacturers, and a solid uh, science, highly qualified human capital and cutting edge technolo technological infrastructure, and, and a state uh, that supports an integrated healthcare system very complete. And talking about the cutting edge health strategic projects, and we, we hope that this project will be financed as well with almost uh, 1 billion uh, euros coming from the European Union recovery plan. And on the other hand, uh, half a billion uh, euros uh, coming from the private, private sector. And once again, uh, to the question, why invest in Spain in pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry? Well, uh, I would say that, as, as you see here, Spain has a solid uh, basic science, as I mentioned, the, the 12th uh, world scientific power and the fifth by scientific production in the European Union. And Spain has an extensive network of uh, 800 public and private hospitals, in addition to a state-of-the-art research center and university, and which is more important, they are working all uh, together. And the Spanish government, on the other hand, offers funding, low interest loans during the startup and growth phases, incentive and tax deductions that make it uh, really interesting to uh, invest in, in this uh, sector and industry. And we also have 81 universities, 80 science and technology parks, including 4% companies related to biotech and agri-food activities, and 6.1% to medicine and health. And finally, uh, I think it's also interesting to mention that biotechnology companies are growing faster here uh, than in other countries. Um, we have uh, 3,500 involved in biotech and uh, 790 strict, uh, strictly uh, working in biotech. And pharmaceutical industry is leader in R&D spending in our country with uh, 425 pharma, pharma companies set aside. Uh, more than 1,000, uh, 1 billion uh, euros for research and development. Then, well, and finally, the fourth sector I want to I wanted to mention uh, today is uh, the agri food. Uh, we uh, we could say, and we usually say that Spain is a food tech nation developing a dynamic ecosystem ac across the entire agri-food value chain with a special focus on innovation, sustainability, and digitalization. I would like to summarize the importance of agri-food uh, with the following data. Um, we have a, a 30,000 exporting, exporting companies in agri-food in Spain and 30 food and res research and development centers. 400 food tech startups and with a very high annual growth that make this sector really interesting. And we also have a 20 university that offers very specialized degrees looking to the food tech and agri tech uh, uh, studies. And well, uh, we also say traditionally that the Spanish agri-food sector is linked with the broader concept of Spanish culture and our way of living. Uh, that's why uh, we also we normally say that we our culinary excellency, healthy diet, quality products, and also creativity and diversity make this a uh, consideration of Spain as a food tech uh, nation. 
And finally, to, to answer to the question of uh, why invest in Spain in agri-food industry, apart from the, the ideas I have just mentioned, I, I'd like to point out that our agri-food production is uh, right now the 2% of the Spanish GDP. Uh, food and beverage sector represent 16% of the industrial sector in Spain, and the employment is around 400,000 people, as you see. And we export uh, 33 billion euros, and our commercial balance in, in this area is, is positive. We have a surplus of, of more than 12 billion. And on the other hand, Spain is the fourth largest producer of uh, food and beverage products in the European Union and 10th worldwide. And finally, uh, Spain is the fourth largest exporter in the European Union and se seven exporters worldwide. Uh, worldwide. As, as Vanessa said uh, just uh, before, there is a lot of room for Indian companies uh, to enter in our market and to invest in Spain. And uh, uh, we are more than happy to help you. Uh, just to conclude, uh, I would like to recommend our website that you can see here, uh, www.investinspain.org, uh, where you can find useful information and other topics and sectors, because I have uh, just selected, as you see, for one for today, and, but you will, you will find many others. And so you can contact us directly if, if you want uh, through our website, but I recommend you as well uh, to take advantage of, of our two economic and commercial offices uh, of Spain in India, and, and especially with Vanessa Alvarez in Mumbai and, and Lucia Patanina in New Delhi. And thank you, thank you so much uh, for your time. If you have any question, I will be more than happy to answer anything later. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, uh, Javier, for this clear presentation. We have been able to see that not only are there many opportunities to invest in Spain, but also a lot of support from Invest in Spain and also from the economic and commercial offices. So we are here to help all the Indian companies realize their projects in Spain. Additionally, the Indo-Spanish Chamber of Commerce is also here to, to provide a guidance and support to all the Indian companies who wish to do business in Spain. So uh, let me introduce you to Mr. Oscar Esteban. He is the president of the Indo-Spanish Chamber of Commerce. And uh, in addition to that, he has also had a wide experience working in India as uh, the business director for the Asian region uh, of Prosegur. He is going to be accompanied by Mr. Alfonso Pérez Bustamante and Mrs. Uh, Aparna uh, Visvanandan. Mr. Alfonso, uh, he's the funding partner of Cabal Infrastructure, a business consultancy company that mainly helps European companies to develop, grow, and manage their business in India or abroad. And also the same for the Indian companies who wish to do that in Spain. He has had previous experience in the infrastructure and energy sectors in India for more than 15 years, working in the Economic and Commercial Office in Delhi, and also as CEO of the energy investment arm of Grupo Isolux Corsam. Mrs. Aparna is the founder of uh, Visvanantan and Company Advocates in New Delhi which uh, advises multinational companies investing in India and which has also offices in Madrid. She's a lawyer educated in the uh, Harvard University and also in the University of Michigan, called to the bar in the US, England and India. I'm going to leave you with the three of them. Uh, please, the floor is yours. Hi, thank you, Lucia. So let me start by introducing ISCC. Uh, though I see many members as attendees, uh, to this webinar, but at least to do an introduction. So for those of you who don't know, because Spain is a bit special on this front, um, um, we are a chamber of commerce. We are the chamber of commerce of Spain in India. Um, uh, the action, uh, the foreign uh, uh, trade action of the Spanish government is composed by, by three pillars or by three elements. One of them, and, and in this webinar, we are the three of them represented. One of them is the embassy of, uh, of Spain, or the embassies of Spain abroad by means of the Economic and Commercial Office. So Lucia and Vanessa are representing that. Second is by ISEX. So we have seen previously the presentation. And third is about the chamber. The, uh, in the end, the chamber maybe is the one that is closer to the business because of its nature. In this case, it's a private organization, non-profit organization, 
and is uh, built, set up by companies. Uh, all members are companies, um, and maybe that is the part that differentiates us. So this chamber, ISCC, in the Spanish Chamber of Commerce, was founded in 2016. And so it's a very young chamber indeed, uh, one of the uh, most junior ones in, 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 of chambers of Spain abroad. Um, it was officially inaugurated at an event uh, in 2018 at the residence of the ambassador in, in, in Delhi, in India, in March 2018. And the objective, as is established in the bylaws, is to uh, foster the, the, the trade uh, and economic relationship between India and Spain, Spain and India, for facilitating Spanish companies to do business in India and for Indian companies to facilitate to do business in Spain or with Spanish companies. Um, in 2019, the chamber got the officiality, so it's endorsed by the Spanish government by means of the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Tourism. That means that is the, the representative of the chamber representative of Spain in India. Um, that means that in Spain we have uh, a number of siblings that are the what, what are called the territorial chambers of of Spain in Spain. There are more than forty, so and those are our siblings. Um, about the chamber, the most important uh, Spanish companies that are operating in in India are members. So if we get the what is the IBEX thirty five similar to the Nifty 50 in India. So the, the Spanish companies that are operating in India pertaining to that index are part of the chamber. We have Indian and Spanish companies, uh, like in, in response as, uh, to, to that nature that I mentioned before or to the objective of the chamber. Indeed, today we are around 80. And some of them, like uh, Aparna or Alfonso, the companies that they represent, are based in Spain. Our activities have been uh, mostly uh, in India, and the services that we offer has been to Spanish companies that want to do business in, in India. However, from 2000, since 2019, we thought that we had to develop the other part that was, or the other leg, that is the, 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 for, that is the Spanish one. So in this case, for helping, supporting uh, Indian companies that they want to do business in Spain. And for that, we, we have an MOU with CII, the biggest uh, Indian chamber uh, for, for that purpose. Uh, we have an MOU as well with FIAP, the Federation of Industries of Food and Beverage in Spain, that shows the duality of ISCC. Uh, by mean, we have got the support and recognition by means of the Indian Embassy in Spain. Uh, for instance, one activity that we develop is uh, stamp uh, and certify uh, labor agreements for Spaniards that want to work in India. So we have been eligible for that. Um, and in the past, uh, in 2020, we did a first activity. We did a webinar about digitalization. That was an activity that was focused in Spain, um, to, dedicated in this case to, because digitalization has been a key point in the agenda, the government agenda of India and Spain. So we, we, we had or we did this uh, webinar about this digitalization and uh, we created the representatives, in this case Alfonso Aparna, to support the activities in Spain. So. Having told that, please, Alfonso, uh, to you. Thank you very much, Oscar, for uh, for the introduction of the chamber, and to let everyone know what is we are what we are doing, no, and what are the possibilities. And thanks to well to all of you and to um, uh, Lucia, Vanessa, and Javier for the clear explanations of what is uh, Spain offering. No? So I, I don't want to, to take much time to, to highlight those things, neither to highlight all the possibilities to invest and all the measures that have been implemented that I'm sure Nitin will explain subsequently. But I would like to highlight what is uh, what we do and how we want to help the Indian companies that, uh, that are targeting or that have in mind to do their businesses 
in Spain. So basically, the, the Chamber of Commerce, in addition to all the activities that Oscar mentioned, is by nature a networking organization that has been uh, giving the opportunity to the different companies to share their experiences, to share their difficulties, and to share their new ideas or potential possibilities. This is what we have been doing in India, where the, where the chamber is based, and that has helped many Spanish companies, including the companies I work with uh, in the past, and my existing company now, uh, to to do these activities. So I, I do encourage everyone to, to try to join from this uh, knowledge that we all have been developing and we are still developing together on the on the one side. On the second part, uh, and going to the uh, activity of the Indo-Spanish Chamber of Commerce in Spain, as, uh, as it has been said, Aparna and I are the representatives of the chamber. So we want to somehow uh, replicate or help to start replicating this uh, in the Spanish soil in such a way that we can be a sort of, a, you can consider a nodal agency uh, to help the Indian companies to have an understanding of what is happening in Spain and how to do businesses in Spain. I have had the luck to develop my activity, as, as Lucia explained, well, thank you very much for that, uh, in the Chamber of Commerce at the beginning, Subsequently, in a large Spanish company, uh, which is Isolus uh, Corsan Group, where I headed the, the energy division, and then with my own company. You know? So I have had the chance to see the three different views of how the activity and the, and the business uh, is developed in India and in Spain. So And, and that is something that probably may give some uh, um, tricks to, uh, to the companies that are uh, thinking to do something similar in, in our country. So please use us. That's the that's the intention. No? So basically, what we will end up doing is that mainly two things. One, as another agency, we will use the resources that the state of Spain has already put in place that are extremely useful, like the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Chambers of Commerce, of course, the Economic and Commercial Offices in in India, as it has been said, that are extremely active and with a lot of knowledge of both the countries and also with Invest in Spain and other geographical institutions that might be interesting for specific businesses, depending on what is your idea that you have in mind. No? There is, a, for instance, there is an investing in Madrid activity. There are a regional chamber of commerce, as Oscar mentioned, that might be very interesting if you are in agro or if you are in, uh, in, in, the, in different activities. So we will be able to guide you to, to know who to, to speak and who to be effective with to develop your activities on the one side. On the second side, we will be able to explain you how we ourselves have been developing our experiences, linking you when, when the time comes to the companies that can help you to develop your activities, like Coinman, who, is, uh, who has a lot of experience and they will explain what they have been doing. Or if you are in a different stage with lawyers, with, I mean, everything that companies actually need, we can, we can also help you in that. And we can also give you an idea of, of what are the, as Vanessa said, no? uh, we have a lot of similarities. We also have some differences, so we can help you to understand what are those differences and how to close the gap and how to make sure that you are successful in your approach. So just as a conclusion, so please do study the possibilities that Spain offer because they are uh, really big and really interesting. Please do approach the institutions, including ISCC and join us if you feel that you are actually going to do activities. And in any case, please do not hesitate to contact Aparna and me for any doubt or any idea that you have in mind to develop your activity. And with this, I will leave you with a partner. Thank you very much, Alfonso. And thank you so much, uh, Lucia, Vanessa, Javier, uh, and, and Oscar. Um, you know, I would just like to add that I think that what um, you know, Alfonso and I are saying as the honorary representatives here, we are encouraging the Indian companies to do, in a way, what we have already done or we are doing ourselves. Um, and that, that and I would just like to point out that it is kind of the right place at the right time because the IT companies in India they already know this because of digital transformation and the whole recent way towards nearshoring. And I think that the rest of the companies that they take a you know a closer look at the European recovery plan, whether they're startups or they're working in um, well, it could be in waste management, in clean energy, uh, segregation. I mean, there are a lot of different fields that fall within the remit of the Euro European recovery. 
um, scope. And I think the rest of the economy should also realize that, look, it, it is the time for nearshoring. It is the time to come to Europe. And we uh, here are just trying to, um, I mean, it's a personal network. We are honorary representatives. It's our own personal network, you know, interest. And, you know, trying to share our experiences because over the past few years, I mean, we have already taken those steps to figure out how to go up setting a company, you know, from the visa onwards and how do you set up the company and which sort of professionals do you use? And I have to say that, you know, even doing this professionally in India, setting up company, when I had to come here and look at the same thing, I mean, there's different terminology, but it was also a very positive experience because, you know, there's so much, you know, apart from being a very friendly com uh, country, it's also very efficient. I mean, I went to set up a, I mean, my own office in, in London. And if I compare that experience to here, I have to say that it's been, I mean, let's just say I closed my London office down. I mean, here it's, you know, it's much more efficient, much more enjoyable. And um, I would encourage you know, all the Indian companies to take a close look at Spain and also join us with the chamber. Thank you. Thank you very much, Oscar, Alfonso, Aparna. Uh, we have reached uh, one of the most interesting parts of this webinar, which is the possibility to hear directly from th three companies uh, that have invested in Spain, uh, who are going to share their experience with us. In the first place, uh, we have HCL Technologies, uh, which is a global company, a global technology company that provides uh, companies with products and services to transform their businesses for the digital age. We have with us uh, Mr. Sumit Nanayan. He is the Advocacy and Corporate Affairs uh, Head for Europe and Asia Pacific. So please, uh, Mr. Sumit, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Indo Chamber, for giving us this opportunity to present here. Uh, well, I'll just brief you about HL Technologies, those who are not aware, but just a very, very short, quick brief and what are we doing into uh, Spain and why have we chosen this location and what kind of opportunities we have and what, what we look after Spain as a destination for our business for next uh, couple of years. So, you know, uh, before that, I'll just mention about my uh, role and responsibilities and what I am doing currently in HL Technologies. So I, I'm heading uh, Europe and APAC region, like uh, the introduction and the introduction into the Europe and APAC region for strategic initiatives, uh, business expansion and corporate affairs. And uh, uh, which includes across UK, Europe and uh, uh, the APAC region, which has many countries what we are present currently. Uh, <clears throat> so in terms of the HL technology is uh, next generation you know, global technology company. And we, we are spread across uh, 52 countries you know, with worldwide network of uh, R&D facilities, co-innovation labs, uh, global delivery capabilities, you know, and over uh, 197,000 uh, employees working with us. And we have now over uh, 11 billion uh, dollar revenue globally with uh, over 160 nationalities working with us. Uh, so I would say uh, probably as one of our one of the leading global technology company, uh, we take pride in our diversity, social responsibility, sustainability and various education initiatives. What we have been doing so far, uh, uh, you know, across uh, across the various parts of the world where we are present. And uh, uh, when it comes to Spain, we we, uh, we began our journey six years ago, you know, currently established uh, business uh, across two locations in Spain, like Madrid and Barcelona. And, uh, you know, uh, from, from a country perspective, you know, uh, uh, Spain, uh, Spain is a country very well connected with, uh, with the roots of HCL, I would say, you know, considering the Indo-Spanish relationship and the kind of uh, Spanish engagements, what we had so far, you know, uh, into our culture. And, uh, you know, Spain uh, Spain has conducive uh, regulatory environment, I would say, for businesses. You know, uh, this helps us uh, deliver uh, services not just locally, but uh, you know, also the other parts of the world. You know, where we are serving our client. You know, like uh, in other countries in Europe, within Europe, plus Americas and you know uh, nearby areas. Um, I say <clears throat> I was just going through a couple of data. So you know, one of the data suggests that nearly 195 uh, Spanish companies are doing businesses in India. You know, 
and nearly 40 Indian companies in Spain. You know, so perhaps I, I'll, I'll see there is a lot of scope, considerable scope to scale up our businesses and a lot of opportunities, which I just uh, saw from the Invest uh, in Spain presentations. I think I'm sure there are a lot of synergies, which, which is uh, going forward, we can uh, leverage that. Um, in Spain, uh, we are currently focusing on uh, developing businesses and delivery capabilities across financial services, digital integration, logistical systems, uh, retail, telecommunications, you know, amongst others, you know, in terms of the key areas of focus. Uh, we heavily invested in uh, developing and absorbing local talent. Uh, that, that says without saying that 99% of our workforce are local Spanish citizens. So we, you know, definitely uh, hiring our and focus primarily on our local talent pool, which we like to leverage, and that's one of the things which is available uh, as far as our skill sets are concerned in 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 the area uh, in Spain. And uh, uh, I would say uh, from uh, from our key milestones perspective, we are. Uh, you know, one of the leading technology partner to approximately 30 plus global clients um, into the Spain and Portugal, I would say Iberia region, you know, so consuming service offers and a lot of product and platform customers. Uh, you know, uh, from, from our uh, new business acquisition perspective, uh, we would be keen to explore various avenues to engage with the new age business entities you know, in areas such as financial services, digitalization, etc., uh, both public and private, to partner uh, with as a leading global technology service provider. Uh, looking ahead, I would say, uh, uh, you know, in the next couple of years, uh, we definitely would like to collaborate with local government and businesses to evolve our collaborative ecosystem. You know, like you know, we have been doing in the other countries, other parts of the Europe, know, where we are uh, present for more than two decades. In some countries we are present in decades so uh, that kind of collaboration as we grow and further will definitely would like to do that uh, i think I'll, I'll probably stop here for a while and have to take any uh, discussions or questions from here now thank you so much thank you very much uh, sumit now in the second place we have with us mr yobi kosla he is the founder and president of stalwart overseas leading manufacturer and exporter of luxury leather goods. He pioneered the production of luxury leather goods in India and has now evolved a stalwart to a global manufacturing company by setting up a facility to manufacture leather goods in Spain. Uh, please, Mr. Iovi, uh, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias, Lucia, for your kind introduction. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to share my experience. So I run, I own and run a manufacturing plant in India, several manufacturing plants in India to manufacture luxury goods, supplying to all over the world, primarily luxury leather goods. Our expertise is in developing fantastic, strong manufacturing systems to develop very high quality products very efficiently. So a few years ago, we decided to go global and set up fine manufacturing units all around the world, catering to the luxury leather goods market. So to start with, the obvious choice of a location of a first unit was either France, Italy, or Spain. We did a study, and for several reasons, we chose Spain. And one of the primary reasons was an existence of a leather, manuf leather goods manufacturing industry in the region of Alicante, LJ, and a good infrastructure and support system. So we decided to set up our factory there. Last year in April, my son and I went to Alicante, a city not known to us, without even any personal contact there, to set up a factory. And in July 12th, that is three and a half months later, we set up the first manufacturing unit and a production with a small team of 15 artisans. Today, we have more than 120 artisans and the factory is running quite well. And we continue to go grow very aggressively as a target for a first factory is to achieve a manpower of more than 500 people, which we will be able to do by early 
2023. Now, during this journey, what was my experience? I would like to share with you. What were my observations by my son and me? So, number one, I think to start with, we can get a good support from the government of Spain, and especially from the regional governments. So, ISEX and IVASE in uh, Valencia did offer us a helping hand and support wherever we needed to set up a factory. So anybody interested in setting up business there can expect really in realistic terms, some support, a good support from the regional governments and from ISEC when they venture to do so. The second point that I observed, the people in general are very, very helpful. Now, when we were setting up a factory, we needed to meet a lot of people. We needed to meet real estate brokers, architects, contractors, lawyers, many lawyers, bankers, and many other people. So whoever we would tell about the project, the first reaction we would get is raised eyebrows. It was a surprise that a manufacturing unit from a low cost country is coming to set up a manufacturing plant in a high cost country. This is not the norm. In fact, it's contrary to the norm. So after the first surprise reaction, we would get a very warm welcome. And a lot of help was offered to us from these people. And mainly this was because they felt that we are doing something wonderful in their country, creating jobs, bringing in investments, and they wanted to be a part of that journey. So which was very impressive for me to see that the common citizen, a Spanish person, welcomed us to say, oh, you're doing something wonderful in our country. We welcome you. What can we do for you? How can we help you? So we were lucky to meet a lot of wonderful people who helped us. And together, we set up this business. Now, the, including the mayor of LJ, Lord, the Lord Mayor Carlos, also Ms. Mara, Maria Parra from uh, uh, the International Minister for Internationalization, there were some of these very wonderful people who very professionally, selfishly supported us and very effectively as well. Now, so the people are very friendly, I think, and very welcoming to a foreigner. Of course, language is a big problem, but the people are friendly. Now, the next observation, the third observation I had is the Spanish people love to party. So when we set up a business, in July, we started production. I wanted to thank everybody who had been associated with us. So the easiest way for me to do that was to invite everybody. I hosted a party, invited everybody. And surprisingly, and very pleasantly, I was surprised to see that everybody attended. Everybody came. And we partied. And that's when I realized they love to party. They love festivals. And we had a great time. Then comes November and comes Diwali. So we decided to have a Diwali festival in our factory. We conducted a Diwali puja. We got a pandit from Valencia, drove him down, and did all the rituals and the ceremonies of Diwali. Now, a couple of days before, I announced in the factory that we're going to do a little festival celebration, Indian festival. You're most welcome to attend if you want to, but you'll need to come two hours before the factory starts, voluntarily, and attend the festivals. And in my mind, I thought maybe a handful of artisans will come. At that time, we had about 90 people in our factory. So I was so surprised and so pleasantly surprised to see everyone we invited. Our entire factory came to experience the Indian festival. And not only did they just participate, they very enthusiastically participated. Everybody wanted in their hands the mauli, which we tie at the puja. Everybody wanted a tikka on the head. A panditji ran out of mauli and tikka. But everybody had a great time. And uh, what I noticed is the people of Spain love festivals. They love fiestas. So if you're planning to live or invest in Spain, be prepared to go there to enjoy the wonderful festivals that they celebrate and they be a part of. This is inherent to their culture, I feel. The next, what I observed is the human resource. Now this, the human resource was the most critical and most important for me because we run a very labor-intensive unit. We need a lot of people to produce these wonderful luxury leather goods that we do. So here is a challenge, I must say, because the cost of labor 
and the taxes and the contributions to social security are very high. So if you're setting up a business, you should be sure, you should be convinced that your business can afford those kind of expenses. The labor laws, I'm afraid to say, are not very friendly for the employer. They're very skewed, very biased towards the employee. But I think this is the same in any developed country. It's not any different. But this is one thing we have to be worried about. However, the workforce. So this, I think, like any other part in the world, there are, it takes all type of people to make the work. And so is the same in Spain. We found some people very dedicated, passionate, and involved in doing a really good job. But then we found some not so much. And some who were wanted to take advantage of the labor laws for the financial benefit. So for this, any company coming in has to develop a very strong systems of good filtration and a selection uh, human resource department to select well. But this is anywhere else in the world, I think. Today, I'm very proud to say that we have just a very new, fresh team of 120 people, which is just a small lot of the number of people we are going to get added to our team. And all of them are very committed, very hardworking, dedicated. So I'm surprised to see it. we really found uh, some people who want to do a great job from the heart. For example, we hired some people who had been working, who were artisans in the leather goods industry for 20 years, 15 years. So we hired them in our business. And after two months of working, they came to us and they came to me personally and said, you know, we just realized that we've been doing it all wrong for 20 years. Now we have learned how to produce leather goods. I told them, you didn't do different, you didn't know, you're not doing it wrong, you were just doing it differently. Because in that region, in Spain, the focus is on mid-market leather goods. They supply to retail chains and mid -market. They are not used to the luxury leather goods. So we, that was a challenge for us to teach them what is the superior high quality in the luxury leather goods, what that meant. But, but surprisingly, and very gladly I saw that they stepped up to the challenge. They did not scare away from it. They rolled up their sleeves, pulled up their socks and got to work. And they said, we want to learn this. Today, I have people who come in sometime earlier, stay back later to learn and to uh, learn more techniques and uh, best practices that we offer. So it's uh, we can get a very dedicated and work oriented team if you want to in Spain. So I can vouch for that. The next is the lifestyle. Anybody planning to ship to Spain or live there, I highly recommend it. It's a fantastic lifestyle. The infrastructure is as good as any developed country in the world. And the cost of living is somewhat lower than the other developed countries. The roads, the recreational activities, the beach. We are near a beach, near a coastal city. The beaches are fantastic. The recreational parks are very nice. The golf courses are wonderful. That's a very big plus for me because I play golf. And uh, overall, the quality of lifestyle in Spain, of course, barring the language, that's a huge problem. So be prepared to learn Spanish, but otherwise it's fantastic. So this is my little bit observation, observations that I have. The crux of it, the matter is we are very happy to be there. We are going to grow very aggressively. The first factory is going to have 500 people. We are already contemplating a second one to cater to our different customers. And probably that's going to be in Spain as well. And that's going to be as big itself. So we have very aggressive plans to grow in Spain uh, as we become global in manufacturing of luxury leather goods. And we are very happy to be there. If anybody has any specific questions, I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Yobi, uh, for sharing your experience. I can see that you have gotten to know Spain very well during this time. <laughs> And now in the third place, uh, we have with, with us uh, Mr. Richard Mills. He's the Global Director for, uh, and public, for Public and Governmental Affairs sorry, of uh, United Phosphorus, uh, which is one of the top five uh, agricultural solutions companies worldwide. Uh, they have presence in more than 130 uh, countries, including, of course, uh, Spain. Please, uh, Mr. Mills, when you want. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Um, yeah, I mean, I um, uh, want to follow on. I don't want to repeat what's already been said, so I'll, I'll try to I'll try to sort of stick to 
to some of the main points. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm Richard Richard Mills. I'm I'm actually based in Madrid, um, and uh, very very much uh, in, in enjoying working in in Spain. So let's let's move to sort of UPL um, uh, United Phosphorus. We're, we're Indian headquartered. Our headquarter is in Bombay. Um, we also have a corporate uh, corporate head office in uh, in London. Uh, we are the the fifth largest agrochemical company in the world. Um, and yeah, our revenue is about five billion dollars uh, uh, globally. Uh, we're based in about 138 countries, and we have about 90 percent access to global markets. So that's very very high uh, for an agrochemical company, and we employ around 8,000 people. Um, we are growing fast. Uh, we are we are moving very quickly in the market. Um, we we're achieving around 20 25 percent growth. Um, and yeah, business business is going well despite uh, the sort of COVID COVID uh, barriers which we all industries have been have been experiencing. Um, but of course, our our main remit is is food security, and so we 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 are able to sort of operate in 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 a restricted environment. Um, moving to Spain, um, we are headquartered. We have a we have our southern European headquarters are in Barcelona. Um, and we employ you know, 100, 150 people there. And then we also have a research station in Seville, uh, where again we carry out the, a, a very large amount of our of our research and, and development activities uh, for, for for global uh, deployment. Um, so we we are very active in the Spanish market. Um, we're also growing. I think we're in the Spanish market. We're, we're achieving sort of double digit growth, um, and it's 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 a very dynamic market. We're also collaborating a lot with um, with local companies, uh, startups, um, and also local institutions so like, like universities. Uh, we we do a lot of work with uh, university food and agriculture research uh, with Spanish universities, where we find there's a lot of fertile ground uh, for collaboration and there's a lot of expertise there. So we 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 move we move very well in that um, in that space. Um, the, the, look at, looking at Spain a, mo, a little bit more holistically. Why are we here? Why why are we doing you know doing business in Spain so much? Well, the the, the sort of Spanish regions, the Spanish autonomous regions, they have a there's, there's huge crop diversity. Um, I've got a, I've got a little file open in front of me right now, and it and you know it's amazing the the the, the diverse the diversity of crops which which are grown here. It can be anything from banana, apples, grapes, cabbages, peppers, strawberries, cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, cereals, olives. It's it's huge. So we are we are really really. Um, uh, you know, taking advantage of 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 the of the Spanish uh, diverse markets and 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 uh, and growing accordingly. Um, a lot of, a lot of food is produced in Spain. I think somebody mentioned that before. Um, and so Spain is seen very much as like a a food basket of Europe. Um, moving a little bit further out, um, you know, why Spain? Why 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 the headquarters um, in Barcelona and and why so much activity in Spain? I think what we what we what we experience in Spain is this very open culture uh, to to business and to and to collaboration. Uh, we see a very buoyant economy, um, which we which you know that's that's the kind of area that we want to be in. Uh, we see a stable political environment. Which is also very important, given you know, as I mentioned before, we we're about ninety percent um, integrated all around the world. What we like to see is stable political environments, um, and also, yes, again, it's been mentioned a few times, but the quality of life uh, for moving to Spain and and um, and and settling in Spain and 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 taking up root in, in Spain is is also uh, very very important. Um, personally, I, I also see a lot of. Um, a lot of advantages in collaborating in this way with with organisations like the um, the ICEX as well as the, the Spanish Foreign Ministry. Um, these are the sort of avenues which which companies need to be taking in order to in order to find those ways into Spain. So I'm I'm, I'm a big supporter of initiatives like this one, um, and yeah, uh, look forward to uh, collaborating in this way and 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 with the organisers uh, very much in the future. So I hope that's been very helpful. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, uh, Richard. We have arrived to our last speaker, Mr. Nitin Garg. He's one of the co-founders and partner of uh, Coinman Consultants. And since we're running a little short of time, I'm going to let you, uh, Nitin, introduce yourself and Coinman directly. Please, the, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Alicia. Uh, I will just share my presentation as well and then start. OK, uh, is it visible, Lucia? The presentation? Yes, it is charging. Yes, it is visible. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much. And uh, I think it's lovely to meet all these tall words here uh, in the conference. And I was always, uh, so I started working for Spanish companies uh, about, uh, I don't know, maybe about 15 years ago. And ever since, uh, I've probably made more friends in Spain than clients. So I've always uh, been in love with Spain as a country. And I think after listening to Mr. Costa's explanation uh, i think i should be the first one to set up an office in spain uh, i think it's incredible as a country and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's actually very nice to listen to what mr costa had to uh, say uh, so without taking too much time uh, my idea is to just introduce the regulatory aspects of uh, investing uh, not just in spain but anywhere outside india but because we're talking more specifically spain uh, I'll just quickly walk through the regulations that exist in India. Uh, so uh, usually it is termed as overseas direct investment uh, and any company or person in India is uh, allowed under automatic rule. So we don't need any specific approval while any investment is made overseas. And uh, as we heard over and over again, India and Spain uh, share excellent relationships uh, politically with each other. So there is no real embargo or restriction or approval requirement for making investments in Spain. Uh, businesses in India can either set up joint ventures, make financial investments, or set up wholly owned subsidies uh, in Spain uh, to conduct uh, their respective businesses. Uh, it, as I said, it is allowed under general permission. We don't need any approval. Uh, as far as the amount of money that can be invested, is about is four times the net worth of the Indian entity which is making the investment, uh, but it cannot exceed a USD billion, uh, one billion per financial year. Uh, we can set up a joint venture or a subsidiary uh, uh, in Spain. Uh, we can send money either as capital contribution, which means by investing in share capital of the entity in Spain, uh, or by purchasing the shares from an existing company. Uh, so if, if you want to invest in a company which is already doing the business in Spain, you can easily buy shares of that existing company from existing shareholders. Uh, we can use mechanisms to either buy the foreign exchange from banks in India to make the remittance for investment, uh, or we can use our exports proceeds to make the investments uh, in Spain. The entity in Spain continues to remain taxable in Spain as per the Spanish local tax laws. Uh, it does not uh, create any taxable event for that company in India. So uh, receiving investment in Spain by a Spanish company does not expose it to any risks uh, as far as Indian tax is concerned. However, we need to be just a little bit careful that uh, you know the Spanish company or business is managed effectively uh, by people staying in Spain. Uh, if if the business starts to get managed and controlled by people staying in India, then uh, we have a tax issue in India and uh, the Spanish company becomes taxable in India. Uh, dividends uh, can come freely from the Spanish company back to the shareholders in India. Uh, there will be a tax in India on those dividends. Uh, shares can be easily transferred. There is no problem. And if the shares are sold, there will be capital gain if, if at all, and that should be taxable. And then there are, of course, transfer pricing rules to comply with uh, if there are any transactions between the Indian and the Spanish company. So there are small procedures uh, before making the investment and after making the investments. I will not go into the details of those procedures, but uh, just for you to know that if you're planning to make that investment, uh, uh, in Spain, uh, you just need to be mindful of complying with these processes because 
uh, RBI does uh, take note of all the overseas investments that happen from India. And if there is default, there are significant penalties, etc., which one may need to uh, bear. So it's uh, these are simple formalities, and uh, it's better that these are taken care of upfront. And then there are certain ongoing compliance requirements after making the investments. Uh, uh, there are compliance requirements in terms of filings with the RBI on a regular uh, yearly basis. Uh, this is a brief tax snapshot for Spain. Uh, we are not Spanish tax advisors, so it is always advisable to talk to someone in Spain uh, who can advise you legally and who's more uh, of an expert. But broadly, the corporate tax rate in Spain is 25%. Uh, capital gains are treated as well as business incomes are taxed accordingly. Dividends, etc., cetera, are not uh, taxed. Uh, but if you're looking to make investment in Spain, uh, you know one should consider broadly a tax cost of about 25% while preparing their business plans. Thank you so much. Uh, this was a brief presentation about the legal and tax requirements for investing in Spain. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have been quite active uh, on India's Spanish business uh, corridor. We have one Spanish lady, Ms. Berta Casas, who works with us and uh, you know, can help you if you want to go overseas and invest in Spain. Uh, but more importantly, we have all the right people sitting uh, in this webinar uh, who can definitely share their experience, make your journey easy while you move to Spain, and uh, you know make sure your project is successful as well. Thank you so very much. Uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that we may have. Thank you very much, uh, Nitin. Uh, I'm sure that there might be many questions, so now it is the time to ask them. Uh, please, those of you who have questions, if you can uh, raise your hand in the in the platform in Teams, I will see you and I will uh, give you the floor. I see anything. You have the your hand raised. I don't know if you have a, a question. No, no, I have. I I want to ask Aparna because she has set up a professional services firm in uh, Madrid. I wanted to know her experience as well uh, you know, because you know I run a professional service firm as well. So what uh, really motivated you to start this in uh, Spain, and how has your journey been and experience been in Spain? Uh, well, listen, I mean, yeah, I mean, here it's, I mean, obviously, I mean, our firm, the, our company here is not providing legal services. It's not like the Shinaman company in, uh, not licensed, obviously, in Spain. Sorry, but now I can't hear you very well. Can you just uh, get closer to the mic? Yeah. Can, yeah, can you hear that. me now? Yes, thank okay. you. No, what I'm saying is the company here is basically a consulting firm. Um, because obviously being, you know, I'm an Indian lawyer, an American lawyer, and a British barrister, but I'm not licensed here so as a as a foreign lawyer even if you're doing out of court work you can't set up your own practice okay so we have basically a consulting firm which is what we're more interested in anyway and and actually we're looking specifically trying to help the indian spa, uh, startups especially in the areas kind of close to my heart in terms of uh, you know working for um, for where we're doing segregation of waste and you know clean water projects so I mean, my experience up to now, we're still at the very beginning stages, but you know, it's quite exciting because, I, as I said earlier, I mean, it was, um, I mean, maybe because you know, I'm I professionally, I do set up companies in India, but so I know, you know, the the basic outlines. But it was still very uh, easy to deal with professionals. You know, you need a certain amount of orientation. I mean, people who will help you and guide you along the way. But you know, after that, it's uh, very, you know, it's quite painless. I mean, so, uh, the costs are relatively cheaper. And um, it's very efficient. I mean, even if it's the banking system, and especially if you're working remotely and you're traveling between India and Spain. Um, I mean, for me, it was so much easier between India and Spain than, for example, I mean, I had an office in London for many years. I mean, between Delhi and London, oh my God, I mean, we've come in, you know, with such a lot of paperwork. Yeah, of course, it's a little bit later in time and everything is digitized, but quite. Um, it's quite manageable. And as I was saying, I, I really do think um, this is the right time. And, uh, you know, the cost is more than 
as I said, conduct those work in the in, in the Europe. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Abhinav. Please, uh, Oscar. You're muted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. No, Lucia, I was thinking, okay, now, I, I was sorry, uh, seeing that there are not other uh, hands that has been rising, so I was taking the opportunity, please. Uh, to be honest, what we have seen, for instance, HCL is a member of the chamber, that means that, okay, and it's a, uh, I will say it's something that we have seen in the last one year, two years, there are more Indian companies interested in Spain, and that is the reason why HCL is one of these cases. And apart from that, I think, sorry, is there, uh, yeah, sorry, with us is Thomas, Thomas Joseph from MapLow, that is, sorry, is a member of the chamber as well, is based in Barcelona, uh, while Aparna and Alfonso are in Madrid. So maybe it's good that uh, Thomas explain a bit about uh, his experience because he's from Kerala, is Indian, okay, and speaks Spanish very well. Uh, about the experience. I, I spoke with him yesterday and for these minutes, if there are no some other questions, I think the most important, the, sorry, the most interesting thing are the, the experience no, of others. No, So, uh, Thomas, you are there, no? I think that's a great idea. Uh, Thomas, if you want to, to share your experience with us, please. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, so, thank you, Oscar, and thank you all the, the participants. Uh, see, I'm Thomas. Um, I'm from I'm from Kuchin, basically, but I live in Barcelona for the past uh, 16 years. So mm -hmm. we have been uh, and uh, for the past 12 years, I've been uh, working on providing support to the Spanish companies. You no, know, when they wanted to do business in India, so we are uh, setting up. Uh, we are helping the companies to set up business in India, and uh, we are providing a complete uh, support to them. The same way, uh, we are also um, helping the Indian companies, you know, Indian companies when they want to do business in Spain. Because uh, for us, uh, we have been very helpful for various companies because uh, we recently, we have been, we have a team in Spain, we have a team of Spanish lawyers also. But uh, for us, uh, you see the Indian companies when they wanted to set up business in Spain, definitely. Uh, there are a lot of doubts, a lot of confusions they have. So they wanted to keep on, uh, because also as the earlier the speaker told, there's a big language barrier is also there, it's true. The Spanish people are very friendly, very, when they, when the Indians come over here and they start doing business, they enjoy doing business here because the Spanish, you feel that you're in the same country, you know, that's a feel you get it. Uh, just like in a home country, you feel, you know? So, but for us, um, we are being helping these uh, Indians to bridge the gap, you no? Know, because for them, they find some difficulties when they go to the law firms and all these things, uh, to language barriers and all this, uh, all these problems, you no? Know? So we help them to meet these barriers, and we help them to set up the business in Spain as well. So we have, as uh, Oscar was explaining, that he has been uh, the, um, the Indo-Spanish Chamber of Commerce started in 2016. Probably I started working uh, to India uh, from Spain to India in 2012. So in that, uh, 2000, more before 2012, I started in 2010. During that time, uh, the financial crisis was just uh, hanging up in, in Spain and it was very difficult time for the Spanish companies to think about going to India. No? So India was a very far country for them during that time. So, but uh, I think the financial crisis made it made the, the Spanish companies also to think more. No? So they, want, they are interested to go uh, outside uh, to more northern, more, not only to European and South American or Latin American countries or into African countries, but they are, uh, they had to go to India also. You know? So these things help the, the Spanish companies also. You know? So for me, I have been seeing the difference how the Spanish economy grew here. You know? the, because in 2010, that time, I was seeing the diplomatic relations between India and Spain was not so, I, I believe, was not so uh, uh, active. It is true, we have still, but now the not only the diplomatic, the cooperation between the scientific cooperation, the cooperation in scientific uh, R&D research and development, and uh, the, you can see in Spain, we have the technological collaboration, Barcelona is a tech city, uh, innovation city, all these type of collaborations are happening. No? So that the, this is uh, this is brought to light to Indian Indian companies also, but still I believe there is a huge gap gap 
of the opportunities that is lying in Spain between India and Spain. The Indian companies still are not uh, known about the opportunities the Spanish uh, the Sp in Spain we have no? uh, for the Indian companies. The Indian companies always think about going to US, uh, UK, Germany, and also opportunities that is available in Spain is not brought to the light. So we are doing some promotions for these things by our own, by with our own firm here. We go to, when we go to uh, India, we used to travel to India every year, uh, three or four times along with Spanish clients. We have Spanish clients in different, uh, we have been able to provide support to the Spanish clients. Uh, we have four Spanish clients uh, already set up business in different cities of India. And uh, we have, uh, we are giving legal support to various Spanish clients directly and indirectly uh, uh, on a daily, monthly basis too. So I'm very happy to be uh, in this conference and Oscar, thank you for giving this opportunity. Okay, so I see that there are no more hands. Uh, just in case anyone uh, is having trouble with that, uh, now you have the opportunity to ask directly a question. Okay, and if there are no questions, uh, let me just uh, finish uh, by thanking you all. First of all, the speakers for being here and also for the high quality of all the, the interventions. I think uh, you have been able to provide a comprehensive overview of all the investment opportunities in Spain and also of the practical aspects to, to be taken into account. And a special uh, thank you to, to the companies who have shared uh, their experience. I hope to, to be able to meet you soon or to meet in, in other events of this kind. And thank you to all of you who have uh, connected today. You have all of our contacts of the Indo-Spanish Chamber of Commerce, the Economic and Commercial Offices, Ethex, uh, Coinmen, uh, Cavadi Infrastructures, and Ambis Bantham. So you can reach to us in case you have any questions after this webinar, in case you have any projects or you need any help uh, for conducting your, your projects in Spain. So thank you to all of you.